All right, so now we're gonna use the kinematic equations. And there are four kinematic equations that I like to use when we're solving problems. Now, three of them are given on the AP exam equation sheet. The fourth one is not. Um, but I still think the bottom one is useful in certain instances, okay? And so the way you wanna think about this is these kinematic equations only apply when the acceleration is constant. There's a separate lesson after here if you wanna see how they're derived with that assumption. But the key thing to remember, the acceleration is constant. We can only use them when the acceleration is constant. If it's not constant, can't use these equations. There are five kinematic variables we usually talk about during the motion. There's the displacement, the velocity at the start of the motion, the velocity at the end of the motion. Start and end is kind of where you want to choose it to be. It's like, it's initial and final are kind of not really good words. It's just saying the at, at one point in time, there's a velocity. At another point in time, there's a velocity. And this is just the starting one. This is the ending one. There's the acceleration, which is a constant value, and the time. So there are five kinematic variables that are happening here. And here's the key idea. When you're solving a math equation with one equation, that means I need to know three of the, or I need to know, notice that the kinematic equations all use four of the kinematic variables, okay? So there's four kinematic variables in every one. Like this one doesn't has, does not have final velocity. And this one here does not have the displacement. This one doesn't have final velocity, doesn't have displacement. What is this one missing? It doesn't have time. And this one is missing acceleration. They're all missing one of the five kinematic variables, which means in order to solve them, I need to know three of the quantities to solve for the fourth unknown quantity, right? So each equation has four variables. It takes three known quantities to solve for the remaining two kinematic variables for any of the other ones. Because once you have the other one, you can solve for the other two, basically, using a combination of equations. Okay, so in terms of the, the idea, the idea is we're going to go through a problem solving step, we're going to sketch out the motion. And you've been practicing on the previous lessons on what's the displacement vector, what's the velocity vector, how do you identify the direction of the acceleration in that vector, we're going to list all of those kinematic variables, just write them out. You're going to identify the initial and the final of the motion. You're gonna identify which direction is positive and which direction is negative, right? We're gonna fill in the known variable because all of these except for time are vector quantities. That's why you need to know the positive and negative direction, which is either given to you or you have to define when you're solving for the problem. But ideally in a problem, you should have three known values and one unknown that we're looking for. And based on that, we're gonna pick the appropriate kinematic equation that includes the three known and one unknown, and we're gonna solve for the unknown value. So that is our problem solving steps for any kinematics problem like this. Okay, and so let's go through a few examples here. So in a slap shot, a hockey player accelerates the puck from a velocity of eight meters per second to 40 meters per second in the same direction. The shot takes this, calculate the distance over which it accelerates. Okay, so we're gonna list out so first of all, you're gonna draw the motion, right? So we have a puck, it's moving at eight meters per second. We'll just say it's to the right. And then it's going, then later on, it's gonna go 40 meters per second. And those are velocities, right? If the shot, the time takes point, calculate the distance. So we wanna know how far, we wanna know how far this distance is. So we're gonna look at this information and go through one of the kinema each kinematic variable at a time. So the displacement, okay, so first let's define our positive. We'll say right is the positive direction. Okay, so the displacement here is to the right. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the displacement vector because the length of that vector is gonna be how far we travel, right? The initial velocity is at the start of the motion, so it started at eight and it's pointing to the right and right is positive, so we'll make that eight meters per second. Final velocity, is the velocity at the end of that motion, it's going 40 meters per second. Um, we're calculating, we want to know the distance, the acceleration we don't know. This is an un, not given to us in the problem, but we know the time it takes, 0 0.0333 seconds. And so given that, all right, we have three known quantities we can solve for any of them. So we're looking for an equation that has both the displacement, initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration. The equation that's missing the acceleration because we're not given that. But we have three known quantities and we're looking for the fourth unknown. Now, if you go back to the equations, we say, oh, which one is missing the, um, missing the acceleration is gonna be this equation right here. Okay, so we're gonna say the displacement is equal to one half V plus V zero times T. So just write it out and then just fill in the numbers. So this is gonna be one half V is 40, 
v0 is 8, and the time is 0 0.0333. And so then you're just going to get your number there. So 0 0.5 times 48 times 0 0.0333, and that's going to be zero, about 0 0.8 meters. OK? So that's it. It's that's as simple as the process is. Now you got to get the directions correct and you got to get the signs positive, but you follow those steps. That's how we're going to handle every problem. So let's take a look at this. We have a car that's traveling to the left at 40 meters per second. It comes to a rest over a distance of 20 meters. So rest means it's stopped. And that distance from there to there is 20 meters. We want the magnitude and the direction of the acceleration. Okay, so which way do we want to make positive? Let's make uh, left positive. Okay, we'll make left the positive. Well, actually, we'll make right positive. It doesn't matter. If they don't define the positive direction, you define. What is the positive direction? Then we're going to list out the kinematic variables. Okay, now the displacement vector is from the start to the end. So it's pointing to the left and its length is 20. Right, it's a distance. Right? It's pointing to the left, so it's negative 20 meters. Notice that, because I said right was positive, and the arrow is pointing to the left. The initial velocity is also pointing to the left, so it's negative 40. Okay? The final velocity, the velocity at the end, is going to be 0 because at rest. And we want to know the acceleration. Okay, We're not given the time. So then we want to say, like, oh, OK, let's look at the let's look at what kinematic equation connects these four variables the one that doesn't have time and if you look at go back and look up you can see up here which one doesn't have time it's this v squared equals v naught squared plus 2a delta x so we're going to have v squared equals v naught squared plus 2a delta x and then just don't solve for anything just plug in the numbers now so v squared is zero v naught is negative 40 and we're going to square it plus 2a times negative 20. So this is going to be 0 equals 1,600 minus 40a. And then you can solve for a. It's going to be 1,600 divided by 40. Notice that we're going to get a positive number. OK, so I get positive 40, and that's meters per second squared. Now that means, what's the direction? The magnitude is 40. It's to the right. OK, so the acceleration, why? Because we said right was positive. So the acceleration is 40 meters per second squared to the right. Now, the question, is this consistent with the car speeding up or slowing down? What did we say for speeding up or slowing down? Well, the velocity is to the left. The acceleration is to the right. It is slowing down because the velocity and acceleration vectors are opposite directions. And does, it, and does that make sense that it is slowing down? Yeah, he came to a stop. So, of course, he's slowing down, right? He's hitting the brakes. He's coming to a stop. So he's slowing down. Thanks for checking out this video. I hope you found it really helpful. If you'd like more support, maybe you need more multiple choice practice. Maybe you just need more guidance and things like that. I have plenty of information on my website. If you look in the description below and go to www.bothellstemcoach.com, uh, I will explain all the ways I help students be successful in the AP classes.